Shimano's previous generation, the 11-speed R8070 or Tegra Di2 groupset, is the benchmark of performance versus price, but I'm convinced the new R8100 has elevated the second tier group higher than ever before, to the point I'd question why anyone would actually bother with your race. But before I tell you why, I'd like to thank our sponsors Freewheel for the ride kit. If you like the look of what I'm wearing, then you can find out more in the video description. There's not a huge amount separating Shimano's new top tier road bike group sets. The mechanics of the brakes and the electronic motors on Ultegra R8100 are identical to those on Dura Race. That means you get servo wave assisted braking, new brake caliper technical details and ergonomic improvements in the shifters. Ultegra is also 12 speed and with built in Bluetooth connectivity you get the full connectivity that Di2 was always actually offered but without having to fit supplementary components. That means Garmin head units can connect with the group set and you can modify gear shifting options through Shimano's app. Dura Race R9100 gets a lower overall weight thanks to higher end materials but you do pay a significant premium for what it is. In context of a full bike it's a modest weight saving. You also get a nicer shiny finish though that assessment is of course entirely subjective. Shimano has introduced a semi-wireless system for both Ortegra and Dura Race. This does away with wiring from the shifters to the derailleurs, meaning a much cleaner build on bikes. Shimano has retained the long life, large capacity seat tube mounted battery with dual wires running from this to both derailleurs. A semi-wireless setup brings most of the benefits of SRAM's ETAP group sets with the tidy and clean front ends, though assembly will never be quite as simple as those. Shimano has also combined the charge port for Di2 into the rear derailleur, so you no longer need a junction box mounted under the stem at the end of the bar or integrated into the frame. Ortega's R8100 shifters are powered by a coin cell battery in each, with a claimed battery life of between 18 months and two years, depending on the usage. Shimano claims you'll get around 1,000 kilometers between charges from the main battery with derailleurs. I've currently notched up about 600 miles or about 950 kilometers, and my Garmin head unit is currently showing the Ortegra battery has around 30% left. I've no reason to doubt Shimano's claims, and if anything, I think it has been rather conservative with its estimations. It's either that or I don't shift gears often enough. I've spoken before about feeling a bit cheated by the previous generation of Di2 as the usability of the system was limited in most cases on complete bikes. This is primarily because almost no bike brands equipped their Di2 bikes with the optional Bluetooth aerial, meaning you couldn't easily access the shifting options on the Shimano eTube app or your head unit. With all that wireless now incorporated, I found myself playing with the Shimano eTube app, trying out semi and full synchro shifting along with multi-shifting priorities. I can't say that I'm a big fan of the full synchro shift. This sees the group set automatically shift the front derailleur depending on where you are on the rear. Most of the time, it's pretty seamless, but on the occasion where I want to stay in the big ring to crest a smaller hill, the group set would shift the front derailleur just when you didn't want it to. Semi-synchronized mode, which automatically shifts the rear derailleur into the next best gear when you shift the front derailleur, is much more welcome, especially at the end of a long, hard ride when you're not exactly at your sharpest. You could argue that this level of adjustment isn't all that necessary and perhaps it's just tinkering. But I still maintain that if I'm paying a premium price for a premium electronic group set, I want full access to whatever it can do. So I applaud Shimano for finally making it standard rather than an upgrade. This also means any firmware updates can be pushed over air rather than waiting for your bike to be serviced at a Shimano approved bike shop. What do you think of Shimano's full auto shifting system? Would you ever use it or would you rather Shimano leave shifting up to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Shimano claims the new group set is faster than its outgoing R8070 group set, with a claimed increase in speed of 58% for rear shifts and 45% at the front. Now I never felt the previous Di2 was in any way sluggish or laboured, so when you're dealing with fractions of a second per shift, it was hard to discern any real difference while out on the road. However, I will say the shifting is truly flawless under normal road conditions. The new Ultegra and Dura Ace cassettes both include what Shimano calls Hyperglide Plus technology. It's first seen on the brand's mountain bike cassettes. This tooth ramp profile helps to eliminate what Shimano calls chain shock, smoothing out shifts as you move down the cassette, even under pedaling loads. As proven many times already, the tech really does work and it helps smooth shifts out when mashing away on the pedals. The only time I felt the shifting faulted was when climbing in the big ring and shifting down to the small ring on the front. There's just a little hesitation as the chain releases tension from the 52 tooth ring and drops down into the 36. 
Shimano only currently offers two variants on the cassette, an 1130 and an 1134. I had the latter. Unlike SRAM's Axis offerings, the Ortegra DI2 derailleur doesn't come with any sort of clutch or damper. This means you get a bit of chain chatter when riding on rougher roads. The braking performance of Shimano's 12-speed road group sets presents a considerable upgrade on the already excellent 11-speed version. The redesigned calipers allow for more clearance between rotor and pads. This means the scrapes and rub I could induce on the previous version have been completely eliminated. The new lever shape combined with the introduction of Servo Wave has been brought over from GRX and the brand's mountain bike group sets has made the braking feel simply stunning. Servo Wave sees the braking ramp up power in a smoother curve, so you get a much more progressive sense of the brake power increasing. This means it's easier to avoid putting the brake on too hard or scrubbing too much speed at the initial part of the lever stroke. The reshaped lever and the repositioned pivot has improved braking feel from the hoods. It's a subtle change, but it's a big one. Let's be honest, most of us spend our time up on the hoods rather than in the drops. The changes see the lever move easier in a smoother arc when braking from the hoods. The outgoing levers had a slightly hesitant feel as you push the lever over the fulcrum of the brake's movement curve. This was never an issue when braking in the drops, but trust me, you can really feel the difference on the hoods. It's a change that makes you rethink, relearn, and adjust how you brake from the hoods, but it's an improvement that just allows for much more control. Wheels aren't usually part of a group set review here at Bike Radar, but Shimano significantly revamped its Ortega wheel set alongside the Ortega group set, and I've also put them through their paces. Historically, I'd describe Shimano's wheels as very safe designs. Some even might say they were dated. The new wheels book that trend with a new profile that's wider, with a broader blunted aero shape, and they're tubeless ready. Both Durace and Ortega share the same rim profile, with Durace getting a lighter layup. At 1488 grams a pair, they're a decent weight and the cup and comb variants are classic Shimano, easy to maintain and durable. The new Freehub uses a standard pawl engagement rather than the new direct engagement system found on Dura Race. On the road, the wheels have really impressed me. There's a good level of stiffness laterally with no undue flex when sprinting. The pickup is also quick from the Freehub. I also like the understated graphics on the rims, which to my eye looks more stylish than Dura Race with its bolder silver logos and triplicate around the rim. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Comparisons between Ontegra and Dura Race are inevitable, and rightly so. In all honesty, I reckon the performance of Ultegra is indiscernible from its pro-level big brother. The shifts are accurate, slick and smooth, the wireless connectivity brings more to the party than ever before, and the braking is exemplary in every instance. And then there's the cost. Ultegra Di2 comes in at £2,328 a full £1,200 cheaper than Dura Race. When it boils down to it, the £1,000 plus premium you're paying for Dura Race saves you only 411 grams. In real terms, that's around the weight of a small water bottle, about three quarters full. If you must have Dura Race, you obviously won't be disappointed. Though, I for one would rather pocket the difference, safe in the knowledge I'm still getting the same mechanical, electronic and braking performance. You may have noticed that we didn't compare this to SRAM's Force Group set. If you want to see a versus video, then make yourself heard in the comments. While you're in the comments, let me know what you think of Ultegra. Does this spell the end for consumers buying Dura Race? If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you know every time we post a new video.